Thank you, Dean Ward, for those kind remarks. Um, I made it to the stage without tripping, so I'm successful so far. <laughs> so I'd like to share a story with all of you. It's about when I was seven years old. I told my mom that I wanted to save someone's life. That was my dream. And so since then, I decided I wanted to become a doctor because that was the only literal, logical way I knew how to do that. But then high school anatomy happened, and well, I thought watching the TV show Grey's Anatomy might do me justice. Well, it didn't, so I chose the next best thing to med school, and I ended up at business school, Babson College. And as I started my journey here at Babson College, I knew one thing. I was here to find my purpose, my calling, a way to use a business degree to help people, to help people. How would I do this? Well, I started to observe. And after four years of observing, I had a few epiphanies about the world. A major one being, most people don't realize what they live for. Most people forget to stop and cherish interactions they have with one another. A recent study conducted by Nielsen says, the average person in the United States spends 4.7 hours on their phone a day. Me too, all of us do. That's 23 years of your life on your phone. It's important that we start to look up every now and then. Start being present because you might be missing out on a moment that you'll never get back. A moment you shared with someone, or more importantly, a moment you impacted someone. Because after a while, all of these moments start to blend together. So I began asking myself a question that might help you. What wakes you up in the morning? Not what keeps you up at night, but what gets you out of bed? Now, there will always be the mundane tasks we are committed to, our routine, like maybe work at 7 in the morning, practice, meetings, tests, or maybe even a graduation in the middle of Massachusetts you have to get to, who knows? But that's not what I mean when I ask. I mean, when you open your eyes in the morning and you're staring at your ceiling, what motivates you to get out of bed? Well. While trying to answer these questions myself, I remembered an interaction that I would not have remembered unless I was present. And because I was present, I found a purpose. So last semester, I was in the dunks line as usual. It was my daily routine. I had forgotten my umbrella, and it was pouring rain. My hair was just dripping water. I was miserable. And so now let me introduce you to Woody. <laughs> Woody is the cashier at Dunkin' Donuts and has memorized my order for the past four years. A bagel with butter and cream cheese and a medium sweet tea. He knows both butter and cream cheese. <laughs> Woody is the type of man that asks you how your day is going every day. He greets you with kindness and enthusiasm and has worked at Babson College for the last 33 years. This particular rainy morning, he asked me how my day was going, and I had trouble answering. My eyes filled with tears as I looked down at my one card. I responded it wasn't the greatest, but it took one look back up to be greeted with that woody smile. While handing over my sweet tea, he responded, don't worry, it'll get better tomorrow. Woody. You might not remember this interaction, but I will never forget it. What you didn't know was my mom's diagnosis from the night before, stage four lymphoma. The news came suddenly, and like anything heart-wrenching, turned my world upside down. And in the depths of my heartache, I woke up due to routine that morning, not purpose. 
I was just like most Babson students, packed with a heavy leadership schedule and a full course load. But overnight, I went from student to caretaker that lived four hours away from home. Your words, Woody, started to wake me up and help me get through my senior year, all because I was present. My family's positivity gave me strength at home, though I found my struggle surfaced during my time apart from my mom. I realized that I had a community to fall back on, a community that didn't judge or waver in times of struggle because at one point they struggled too. It was the Babson community. It was all of you that uplifted my spirits. It was people like Linda Grant, receptionist at the Career Center, who shared her own vulnerabilities to mentor me and act as a model of bravery. It was Yana Bliznikova, a friend and a sister, <laughs> that set up restless nights and brought me endless jars of Nutella just to make me feel better. <laughs> now that's what I call friendship. <laughs> My Babson, our Babson, is responsible for kindling a broken spirit. Here's another epiphany. Babson teaches you more than just accounting and finance. What you really take away are the experiences from outside of the classroom. Faculty has taught me to work with purpose. Staff has taught me to be kind and present. And my peers have taught me to persevere in times of struggle. It becomes clear that the Babson community is extraordinary, and it is those like Woody that deserve to be recognized for their kindness every day. All of this reminiscing brings me back to when I was seven years old and I told my mom I wanted to save someone's life. Well, now, at 21 years old, I realize that while I may never be able to physically save someone's life, I can sure have an incredible impact, just like what he did on me. And he was right. It did get better tomorrow. My mom is here today, sitting in the crowd, still fighting. still fighting with resilience and with great grace. So, through the roller coaster of life, the question remains, what wakes you up in the morning? Because I'll tell you that my family does, the one at home and the Babson one, which will be spreading around the world in just a few hours. I'll tell you that I wake up every morning in hopes that a single interaction with someone even just a stranger, might indeed save their life. So, be present, find purpose, and I'll ask you one last time, what will wake you up tomorrow? Congratulations to the class of 2017.